faced this recently when I went to Colorado for a trip. I wanted to go for a hike. It was a 9,000 to 12,000 elevation one. The snow was melting. And I love hiking, but I didn't get the opportunity much. So my friends were scared going up. They were like, you know, it's too tough. Let's take an easier hike or something. But I wanted to go. So I told my friend, dude, I'm there for you. If we both will go together, not both, many of us were there. We go together. We'll, we'll help each other out in the climb. So saying this, I can give my life for my friend. We went up. But you know, going up in the ice is easier than coming down. So there were moments when my friend was kind of skidding and he was like, hey, plus hold my hand. I'm like, holding you means me falling down too. <laughs> I'm not ready to do that. <laughs> so I changed my stance after reaching 12,000 height. <laughs> okay. No, wait a minute. Who's coming up next? So I'm U4D, uh, I was working at New York Live too. <laughs> okay, so first I think, yes, it should definitely be banned. And the reason for that is I can't drink because I have allergy. And sometimes when I watch people, they drink, I feel like, oh, they are so energized. They're so happy with their drinking. <laughs> but I can't drink it. You know the pain of it? Like when you see somebody else is doing that and you can feel their emotions coming up. But for me, by that time, it's hard for me to catch up. So I feel like, okay, alcohol should be banned so I don't be stuck with all their feelings. I don't have to catch up with that so everybody stay on the same ground. But on the other hand, <laughs> no, it should not. I changed my mind. The reason for that is this is how I met my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like alcohol in that way definitely bring me a lot of benefit because it really give, even though it's a little bit evil to say that, but it gave me an advantage of like probing my girlfriend in that way because I can convince her to drink a lot and she started to bring up her feeling while I was still stay calm so I can <laughs> express my feelings, <laughs> like kind of twist my feeling and express it to her in a way like she feels like, oh, that's awesome, like things like this. So in that way, it definitely shouldn't be bad. <laughs> so. so did we cover four topics? <coughs> Very fast. No, no. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so who wants to come up for the last topic? Yeah. Next one. I am a very interesting person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I am a very interesting person. <laughs> because um, I'm parent of uh, two kids. And uh, I just, uh, I need to entertain those two kids. And I have so many friends, so mommy friends, and also friends from college. Um, and also I do, all right, so and at, at my work, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing um, uh, the, uh, data science type of work, which is supposed to be very trendy thing, so I should be a very interesting person. Okay, I'm gonna switch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why do I think I'm an interesting person? So um, I have a nine, a day, uh, I'm working for a company, I'm uh, getting a salary, so I'm working for somebody else. So. I think interesting person is uh, typically like um, um, uh, movie stars or uh, um, like entrepreneurs and then uh, show up on TV. Those are like uh, typical interesting person. So to me, like I'm uh, like a regular person. So I don't think I'm particularly very interesting. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think data science people are interesting? I mean, last time I told a girl who was in architecture that I am a data scientist, she was like, how do you build your models? I'm like, computer. Oh, coder. And just see what <laughs> <laughs> Okay, connecting the dots. 
there will be two or three images. You can look at one, try to move the topic to the other one. So basically, I'm giving you two to three topics to talk in two minutes. So it's supposed to be easier. You don't have to make sense while connecting them. If you can, awesome. Because certain pictures have deep meanings into it. So look at it, take five seconds, then start talking. And timers and the judges also can participate. Okay, so who wants to come up for the very first image? My name is Scott. I'm a summer guest. Creativity is a practice. Young boy here, can I think here? Creativity is a practice. And I connect in here to education. Now, I love to learn. It's one of the reasons I'm here. Plus, I want to meet people in New York and you know, be part of things. I think learning is a fascinating thing. I think it is. Unfortunately, not everyone in the world can has the same opportunity. I believe education should be free and available to all. I come from Canada, and our, our, our university system is, for the most part, much cheaper than it, than it is in America. At the same time, many people in my country cannot afford education. They cannot afford it. We live in a world of haves versus have-nots. We see it every day in the news. We see it all around us in the street. Um, we see it when we walk past the people on the, on the streets who are homeless or in the subway system. Education is not available to all, and it's sad. Everyone should have equal opportunity in this world, I believe. How we get there, I don't, I'm not sure how we're going to do that. But yeah, everyone should have equal opportunity. The other thing that comes to mind when I look at the young man up here is I think of color. And I think of the fact that I am a middle class white person from a small town in Canada who had lots of opportunities. But not everyone has the same opportunities. We live in a very unfair world, a tremendously racist world. Um, I think in America, but also my country is, is, is very similar. And we don't, again, people don't have the same opportunities. They're not equal. And I connect down here, I think of Toastmasters, the person on stage speaking. And, you know, and speaking is connected to creativity, connected to education, because through words, we can influence other people. You know, it's like a good quote. I wanted to come up actually when the quotes were on. I'm glad I didn't because the quotes were scary, I saw. What would I say? I couldn't figure it out. But, you know, language is powerful. Language is very powerful. And it's why I, you know, I enjoy coming here today. I've got three more weeks to go, and then i got to go home. I'm going to miss you guys. Aww. Thank Aww. you. So when I built this deck, I was thinking of this way. When I was small, I used to talk in the class. Then I joined Toastmasters. The crowd increased. And this is where one day I want to be. So that's how I was making this one. I actually okay. thought of Toastmasters. Yep, that one or this one? All three of them. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. Oh wait, before that. Who's coming up? Okay, who are remaining? <laughs> done, 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 done. Jerome. Let's <laughs> come, on, please come on stage. <laughs> you know it. Welcome back on stage after many weeks of being missing. <laughs> and your topic is? Cool. I'm Jarrell. Um, so, if I'm going to connect all of these pictures, I think of um, the quote unquote, like, not art, but I guess like extracurricular activities that everybody does um, and the multiple forms that they come in. So, you have like you're people who like to do art and paint and sculpt and that type of stuff. And then you have like your musical talent um, and then you have your like athletes. So it's all connected through like those activities that you do, the extracurricular activities outside of like either going to school or just working. <coughs> Unless you become professional in it, then this is your everyday job. Um, you're either an artist or an athlete um, or a musician. So I feel like they're all connected in that way. Um, but I guess I have to connect one at a time. You can do one at a time. Oh, okay. Um, so I think that uh, this could be one person who maybe is like passionate about all three of them, or it could be a group of friends who 
are passionate about all different things, but yet on this one slide they come together and they're like happy with each other. Um, or it could just be they're individuals and they're doing their own individual thing and just living their life. That's it. <laughs> So we'll do two more topics and then we'll be done for the day. So when you see images, you can either talk on one thing which has all three or two whatever in it, or you can talk about one and gradually flow to the other one. You don't have to forcefully link to anything. Okay, so two more remaining. Moving my gauze this side. Actually, you're on the Two more topics and two jazzes. Please welcome Dino. <laughs> When I see this, I'm thinking of a very expensive watch and one that's worth a lot of money, and I could be having a lot of money to buy watches like that. The image I mind. I've never heard of Vanguard, but I'll assume that it's a very nice watch for this particular tabletop. So um, it's nice to have all that extra money, lots of a hundreds there, tons and tons of a hundreds, and be able to watch, watch like that and a couple of Rolexes and so forth. And I hope that uh, you know economy stays as good as it is and we can keep making that kind of money to have all those hundreds and more watches as well. Thank you. And the last participant of the day, <laughs> Thank you, Ross. I'm Linda. Wow, was this made for me? <laughs> when I was a junior in college in 1968, It was legal to say applicant wanted female, applicant wanted male. And it was struck down in that year. I have often felt, it was 50 years since, that not much has changed. You look at the same resume, it says Mary on top, or a bob on top, and people have four times more doubting statements about Mary than they do about Bob. They want to hire Bob. They're not so sure about Mary. That happens today. Now, lots of people say, well, things have changed, and I think one of the best things that's happened in our future now is hashtag me too. Because Women are saying, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not taking it anymore. They're finding their voice. So I think there's a lot more optimism possible than this women uh, displays. But I'm so often, as maybe she is, aware of how the past is our present. That it weren't, you have to work hard to think that the future in my lifetime is going to be dramatically different. Oh, so we'll skip this and that thing off. Because we are like running out of time right now. So, in general, just to sum up once again, when you get any table topic or anything to talk about, bring the topic to your comfort zone. You don't have to exactly talk on that. Whatever comes in your mind, just talk about it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, in the end, if you do not know what to do, talk. Don't make sense. It's fine. <laughs> you need to survive on the stage. That's it. Nothing more than that. <laughs> so, on that note, I'll hand the stage back to the Toastmaster of the day. And take it away.
pleasure to be back here and to participate as a judge and a table topic speaker. And I look forward to being back here again in two weeks. I'm not going to be here next week. I'm going on vacation. I feel like I've been on vacation for six months from these meetings, but I will be going on vacation <laughs> to my favorite place of all places, the Jersey Shore. But I will be back in two weeks, and I will get, be getting my index cards ready because I volunteer for Table Topics Master. So I have plenty of probing questions at that time for everyone. So with that, I'll hand it over to our club president, Chris. Thank you, Dino, and thank you everyone for participating in our exciting table topic workshop. I really hope we all got something out of it. Especially I did. I know how to survive now here, <laughs> talking in the beginning of the meeting and at the end of the meeting. And I hope I make sense. <laughs> So I'll give you a couple of minutes to assimilate your results. In the meantime, let's grab some snacks and drinks. <laughs>